Okay, everybody, as you might have seen from my, um, my wonderful intro, uh, computers were a mistake. Um, we're uh, uh, heading towards hell. Uh, I want to convince you that the external consequences of technology are the consequences we should care the most about. The things that we consider externalities, whether it's environmental impacts or changes to the labor market, are actually things that we should be laser focused on because being like, but I helped these three people can also mean I sent these thousand people to hell. Um, and that those are important relationships to actually understand systematically when we develop technologies. Because being like, these are the consequences I liked doesn't mean that these are the consequences that occur. Um, so starting it off uh, with, like, not a bummer. So I'd like to give you a recipe for hell. So replace all human contact, creativity, purpose, and society with abstractions. Simulations of those things. Uh, reduce people into powerlessness, alienation, and isolation, and uh, each person is a complete indistinct monad lost under giant machines. Dissolve community, divide people into microscopic groups, no unions, no concept of class, only individual laborers. <laughs> if you can't uh, squeeze out every drop of value, I, I'm sorry, I got, the, I got a hold of an unregistered coffee machine, so I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, so squeeze out every drop of labor and value. If you can't squeeze out actual value, create the simulation of value. Uh, burn, pave, and flatten the world to build things that have, are almost immediately tossed into the ocean. Climate collapses, monopolies dominate all industries, and the worst, most heartless people are elevated and rewarded. And hey, disasters are great for introducing new solutions, deregulating industries, and privatizing infrastructure. Children are chewed to death by industrial equipment. Factory owners get Steven Pinker to tell people factories are good for children. Steven Levitt re releases a paper that concludes child death is great for the economy. The economy is great for children. All you have for relief are patronizing, infantilizing toys, and the toys don't even work. <laughs> okay, okay. What do I mean by the IoT? I don't just mean the internet of things, I mean the internet through things. Distributed systems of access and operation like industrial equipment, controllers, Wi-Fi routers, app control, light bulbs, and smart home thermostats. Smartphones are IoT devices. Cars are IoT devices. So if your car has a feature that can be unlocked over Wi-Fi so you can drive away from a hurricane, but it's locked up afterwards because only the people who pay the extra $5,000 get the extra gas mileage update, that is an IoT device. The IoT is an extension of industrialization. This is not a brand new area with original externalities and opportunities. There is, however, a new power dynamic. Distributed equipment means highly intimate power and control over individual lives. So here, here um, I believe this is uh, Jay-Z is funding an app where essentially it's a Fitbit for crime. So uh, amplifying people controlled by the carceral state puts a hip face on surveillance. Although the pitch is to make bail monitoring and, protection and probation friendlier, this also gives the carceral system more channels to monitor people and more measurements to means test against. Hey, you may have showed up for your hearing, but you didn't check in on Crime Square. <laughs> so distributed services mean turning places disconnected by location into the same unity under power. Uber is running a distributed factory town. Until recently, Uber ran a lease program where anyone could get a subprime lease on a car to drive it and earn money on the app. However, many drivers didn't factor in the additional expense of the lease into their take-home pay, which meant many drivers with subprime leases potentially lost money while driving for Uber. They paid Uber for the privilege of driving for Uber. Since Uber controlled the amount of pay drivers received, whether the requested rides actually showed up on their phone, and the price of the leases, Uber created a closed economic ecosystem in which they had as much control over drivers as the Pullman company. So old monopolies still exist, but new monopolies have emerged. Amazon owns online shopping. Google owns search. Facebook owns social media. They protect their patches with intense litigation, patent libraries, and absorbing potential competition. Oh, I definitely click the next slide. Um, so, yes, infantilizing toys, yada, yada, yada. I'm very angry. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, um, so I'm going to skip through some of the slides just so we can get on with it. Um, but Facebook plays, plays with your information. Uh, Facebook plays with your feed. Um, I, what I want to describe in this particular situation is that your availability to express yourself is being mediated by middlemen. 
I'm not saying everybody, oh, team these days are checking their phone. They don't know how to do real things. I'm saying that the kind of conversation that you can have is mediated by middlemen. The kinds of attention and the kinds of things that you see about the real world are seen through these filters. So Facebook literally does this. I really recommend reading this paper. Um, it doesn't mean no possibility for creativity online. It means only expression in terms of the middlemen, like whether it's Facebook's likes or, you remember when Twitter decided that favoriting a tweet meant that you loved it? They changed the star to a heart. That's the means of expression you have through this medium. Um, so this is Ian Bogo's definition of a shit crayon. He made cow clicker. He later found out that cow clicker actually fed into Cambridge Analytica, which is great. Um, so uh, Noam Chomsky actually said this, that brevity favors ideas that the public already accepts because explanation is ask for things that are not accepted already, and brevity butts explanation. So your data is used to rate you as a citizen. As you might know, China's citizen score, this is a general idea where your kind of activity that you can do online, whether or not you can get a driver's license, is actually a factor of what you post and who you know. So you're being rated in terms of sedition based off of your posts, and that means you can or cannot to get a driver's license or buy a foreign plane ticket. Um, so the NSA's PRISM program, as you might know, um, the NSA has a backdoor into user data to look for terrorists, um, but it essentially, uh, because of FISA courts, this, this is an almost completely unregulated process, and the companies who do it, uh, Google, Facebook, YouTube, Yahoo, Microsoft, Skype, and Apple, um, this is, this is part of, uh, partially a problem because uh, the Department of Homeland Security considers Black Lives Matter a terrorist group. So if you have favorited tweets from Black Lives Matter, that might impact your ability to say do other things in life, like get a security clearance. Um, uh, also, uh, r remember that we have this giant security apparatus, we have a giant surveillance apparatus, but they didn't prevent the DNC leak. So if you, if you don't like, you know, the, our, our giant orange cube of a president, then you, you might be like, hey, why didn't this giant su surveillance state actually do anything to prevent a hack? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm not alleging conspiracy there, I'm alleging confidence. Um, so, uh, as you know, surveillance is a business model. Um, oh, to slide. Uh, so, this is uh, the Talkspace privacy policy. Talkspace is a psychology app. It's a middleman between you and your psychologist. Uh, their privacy policy says they can sell your data to anyone they please, and their anonymization says, well, we can de-anonymize it if we choose to. We'll just update you that these terms of use say we de-anonymize data now, which is great. Um, so data is used to decide whether you deserve care. So part of what precipitated the Virginia teacher strike um, was that part of their contract was to receive a health care healthcare based off their scores wearing mandatory fitness. So low scoring teachers would have to pay extra for their health insurance if they didn't score high enough. Um, so we've got billions of tiny useless disposable broken hack devices that are being swallowed into homes, schools, cities, and workplaces. The Reaper botnet combined a few simple tools to hack into millions of devices that are still unpatched. These are still broken, still online, waiting for a signal. There's no simple fix. Many IoT devices are white label products that are almost impossible to trace back to a specific factory. There are over 5,000 different models of internet connected webcams sold on Amazon. As of this year, there are more objects connected to the internet of things than there are humans on Earth. So this is more than just personal junk. This uh, IoT is infrastructure. Like herd immunity, the proportion of vulnerable devices on a network has an essential relationship with the strength of the network as a whole. People don't patch their devices. People use default passwords. People don't pay attention to security alerts. A hacked device on your network might not hurt you personally, but your friend, the Standing Rock activist who uses your Wi-Fi to check her email, might not fare so well. The same goes for the hospital that gets DDoS'd, unable to maintain firmware updates on their power management system, partially because someone got root on your blender. Look, here's, here's an office workplace on Chodan to this link and just see live webcams on Showdown. There are lots of things that are just broadcasting data because they weren't set up with security in mind. So smart objects are also produced in the same resource consumptive manufacturing system as other modern products with the same ter terrible working conditions and environmental impact. One of the unique features of computing devices is the need for conflict minerals and the incredibly, incredible difficulty of recycling them. So, 
Your IoT light bulbs, their systems dependent on tungsten and gold from conflict mines, literally contributed to a war in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which led to more than five million deaths. Huge companies like Apple, who depend on their reputation for sales, are willing to take the financial hit of auditing their suppliers for conflict minerals. What about the thousands of Kickstarter projects and no-name smartwatches choosing not to look at how their suppliers source their components? So e-waste recycling itself is a dirty business. The most common way to recover precious materials in computers and other electronics is to burn them to remove the plastics. Also, the power consumed in, product in producing these goods requires environmental overhauls. The Three Gorges Dam flooded 244 square miles and displaced 1.3 million people from their homes. This project served to generate power for manufacturing plants, but also to widen the Yangtze River to increase its shipping capacity. So you've heard of the suicide nets around Foxconn. It's important to remember the suicide nets are not around the factory headquarters. They're around the dorms, because people live in factory towns on Foxconn. So Nike made a campaign called The Girl Effect, where they were advertising if you give women higher pay, then they spend in the local community. It's better for women to have higher pay. They ran this campaign simultaneously while fighting a unionizing effort in Vietnam where women in their almost all female factories making Nike shoes were fighting for a $600 a month minimum wage. Nike fought that down to $200. When Google acquired Revolve, now Nest, it remotely gripped all of its previous hardware. This isn't just a benign effort to keep systems secure and up to date. When you give companies remote control and authority over your systems, their motivation will always be to churn through old products and demand people purchase the newest systems. Like this is a part of the IoT ecosystem. Remote operation and saying, here's the new one, the old one doesn't work anymore, is part of the power that you give to a company that remotely updates. Even the ones save, claiming to save the environment often don't even save power. Also, assuming uh, the internet consumes power. So a smartphone streaming an hour of video on a weekly basis uses more power annually than a new refrigerator. So Google claims it uses 0.01% of global electricity to run its servers for more than the nation of Turkey. Microsoft once intentionally wasted megawatts of diesel generated power to reduce a fine for initially overestimating its power consumption on a 75 acre data center. Bitcoin mining is consuming more power than the entire nation of Ireland. And this shit doesn't even work. Okay. So startups don't think very much of you. Um, Fiverr, we love people living in economic precarity. It makes them good workers. Uh, seamless, I don't live in one of the most densely populated places in the United States, one of the most expensive places on Earth, just so I could go outside. So, also products routinely ship busted. Um, <laughs> when was the last time you booted up a Microsoft machine and didn't need an hour of updates before you could do anything with it? Like, Jibo largely did not ship with the features it fe advertised in the Indiegogo video. It shipped without things that it said, this is what you get. And it will get fixed someday is also a part of this ecosystem. It's part of this infrastructure. The ability to constantly be tethered to the developer means that they can constantly promise these things are coming one day. Just, just wait, wait, everybody. You know, hey, women will vote one day. Look, everybody arguing for women's suffrage. It'll, it'll happen one day. Oh, Stop being so militant here. Stop protesting in the streets. So products tattle on you, pinging home all the time. With limited documentation, most devices provide, you can't know what to expect when it comes to what your device is sharing with whom. Um, so this device calls home um, to a server in China. Um, so many devices ship already backdoored, whether it's uh, intentional due to lack of project management or intentional. Um, uh, this uh, is, a, is a cool error. Uh, China actually censored the use of the word and emoji flag for Taiwan on certain phones, which was which is a cool, cool little error. Um, uh, apps have unintended unintended consequences <coughs> as well. Strava leaked the locations of military bases because it was a social fitness sharing app. Um, I have to wrap up real real quick. Um, so part of the part of the challenge here is that people didn't know that they were running around a secret military base and sharing their scores with friends online, showing the exact spot 
a heat map of Americans around a base in Afghanistan. Um, so oftentimes we have garbage stuff that solves no problems. De designers invent problems to prop up their devices as a solution. This mirror was designed to reward people for smiling, showing an emoji, emoji when their smile is detected by an internal camera. The heartwarming narrative is used to sell it that smiling increases happiness, and happiness improves outcomes for cancer patients. It's a shame that's not true. So it's based off of two different theories, that smiling increases long-term happiness, thoroughly debunked, and that positivity increases cancer outcomes, thoroughly debunked. I'm going to skip through stuff. I don't have to explain this. <laughs> um, rage clicks are responsible for more clicks than happiness, joy, laughter clicks. There are lots of things that aren't even there to make you happy. They're there to make you angry. That's their business model. So what can be done? All right, I want to go through this real quick. Not more IT, not better IoT. I'm talking about we can use our ability to understand technologies to figure out teleologically where to put our energy. And we can understand uh, how technology and the genre of application needs to be researched. This would be epistemology. So the actual things that changed the world of terrible consequences were regulation, were telling people that they deserved better, were getting people to understand in mass that they can work together to say, I don't want to live in environmental collapse. I don't want to live in internal precarity. I don't want to live where I can constantly shoveled off the earth. And I don't want to live on a burning trash fire of a giant hell world. Anyway, thank you so much. <laughs>